So now that we've taken a look at solving quadratics in five different ways, what we're going to focus on today is choosing a solution method. So there are five ways to solve a quadratic equation, and those five ways are graphing, and then there is by factoring. So factoring is when you take the x method, you know, it multiplies a times c that adds to b, and then you write it um, factored, set it equal to zero, and solve. Square roots, you square root. Um, in order to solve, completing the square, remember you take the b, divide it in half, and then you square it, right, to help you find the perfect number. The quadratic formula, that is when x equals negative b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, so those are just the five ways to solve a quadratic equation. And now let's take a look at a little bit more specifics. So graphing, when you're solving by graphing, you're trying to find the vertex by using the axis of symmetry formula. Remember that formula is x equals negative b over 2a. Then once you solve for the x value, you plug in that x into the original to solve for the y value. Factoring, well, a times c has to add to b. So remember, like if you have a x squared plus b x plus c, a times c adds to b. Okay, and so again, you're doing the x method, the magic x, in order to solve, and then you factor set it equal to zero, and then you use the zero product property. Uh, square roots, so equations have to be in the form x squared equals d, or example, x plus c, and then all squared equals d, so you can uh, take the square roots of both sides. Completing the square, we use that um, when a equals to one, and when b is even. Okay, so that's the nicest time to use it. You could use it all the time, but I would suggest for now that we're just focusing when a equals one and when the b value is even. The quadratic can be used for any quadratic equation. You don't have to think about it, but it is a lot of work, right? So when you're trying to solve a quadratic, you really wanna think about what's the best way to solve it. And so really what we're focusing on is we're focusing on whether it's factorable and then, or if you can solve it by square roots or if you can do it by completing the square or by using the quadratic formula. It's all a way to make it efficient when you're solving. So let's do some practice. So identify the best method to solve for each quadratic below and then solve. So here we have x squared plus 6x plus 8. Now, you know, we have to see, well, I always take a look at, can I solve with square roots? In this case, I cannot. I have an x value in the middle, so this doesn't work, or I have the 6x. And so um, let me see if this is factorable. So are there any factors of 8 that add to 6? Okay, so what multiplies to 8 that adds to 6? And yes, this is factorable because 4 times 2 is 8 and 4 plus 2 is 6. So the method we're going to use is factoring, solving by factoring. And so 4 and 2, we can write x plus 4 times x plus 2, that equals 0. Then you use your product property to solve, so set each piece equal to 0. So subtract 4, so x equals negative 4, and in this case, x equals negative 2, okay? So there's one example of solving by factoring. So let's try another one. x squared minus 5x. Well, in this case, I could do GCF, so in this case, it is still by factoring, so GCF. And then, so I want to factor out, so I have x squared minus 5x equals 0. Let's divide out an x. Remember, when we do that, it goes on the outside. Then we're left with x minus 5 equals 0. Then we could do, use a zero product property again. So x equals 0 and x minus 5 equals 0, or x equals positive 5. Okay, now let's try this next one. x squared minus 10x plus 8. So again, not by square roots. Um, are there any factors of 8 that, when multiplied together, add to 10? Well, 8 is either 1 times 8 or 2 times 4, right? No way. There's nothing that does not, that is not going to add to negative 10. 
So our A value is 1 in this case. A is 1. And our B value, the number in the middle, is even. So in this case, we want to use completing the square. Okay, completing the square. So remember when you do that, you have x squared minus 10x plus 8 equals 0. Then we want to move the imperfect number. And so we have x squared minus 10x plus blank equals negative 8 plus blank. Then we find the perfect number. We divide that b in half, so it's negative 5. We square it, and that is positive 25. So remember, this goes into the blanks. We add 25 to both sides. Then on this left side, we factor. So that factors to x minus 5 and then squared, right? This negative 5 goes here. And then we, on the right side, we're going to add negative 8 plus 25. So that is going to be 17. Okay, negative 8 plus 25 is 17. Now we solve this by square root. So we're going to square root both sides. And now we have x minus 5 equals plus or minus square root of 17. 17 is prime, so we don't have to break that down anymore. So let's add 5 to both sides to isolate our x. So our solution is x equals 5 plus square root of 17 and x equals 5 minus square root of 17. Okay, so just, just a good review on how we solve. The last one, we have 5x squared minus 8x minus 2. So 5 times 2 is negative 10. Mm, there's no factor that I can think of that uh, will add to 8. So this isn't factorable. I can't use square roots. And graphing, I know that's one way to do it, but that's always a little difficult. So in this case, I don't want to use completing the square either. I can't use it because it's a 5, so that... I can't, when I divide it, that's going to make it even messier. Um, our B is even though, but I think in this case, we want to use the quadratic formula. Okay, so if the other methods don't work, then definitely quadratic formula will work. So we have to identify, we have to first set it equal to zero, and it is, it's set equal to zero. So let's identify A, B, and C. A is 5, B is negative 8, c equals negative 2. Then we plug it into the quadratic formula. So x equals negative negative 8 plus or minus the square root of negative 8 squared minus 4 times 5 times negative 2, right? 8 times c all over 2 times 5. So everything's plugged in correctly, and now we simplify. So x equals negative negative 8 becomes a positive 8 plus or minus the square root of 8 squared, which is 64. Mm, and then we have 4 times 5 is 20. 20 times 2 is 40. And because it's negative times negative, that it will be a positive 40. And then 2 times 5 is 10. So x equals 8 plus or minus the square root 104 and divided by 10. Then you need to simplify. So x equals 8 plus or minus the square root and 104. So let's divide 4 into 104 to break it down. So that goes in twice. 24. So 4 times 6 is 24. So, so far it's 4 times 26 and 26 breaks down to 2 times 13. Then 4 of course breaks down to 2 times 2 and so this final answer is 2 root 26. So this is 8 plus or minus 2 root 26 over 10. Now we can reduce because we have, um, there's a value that can go into 8, 2, and 10. And so what goes into all three? Well, 2 does. And remember, you cannot divide into the square root. That's not allowed. So 2 goes into 8 four times. So we have x equals... 4 plus or minus 2 divided by 2 is 1, square root of 26, and 2 goes into 10 five times. So that's the final answer. Now go ahead and try these next three. So pause the video, and when you come back, I'll have the answer for you. The 
if you tried this out, you would see that number 1, you can factor it. So a times c, negative 18, adds to negative 7. That's negative 9 and 2. So you do the factoring here. And so x equals 9 and x equals 2. For number 2, you can only use a quadratic formula. So notice that 1 times 3, that will not add to 5. So we plug it into the quadratic formula, and you get negative 5 plus or minus root 37 over 2. Completing the square also doesn't work as well here because 5 is odd, so I wouldn't use that method here either. Number 3, we have 3x squared equals 27. So we don't have a bx, right? So this is one of those that you can just use a square root. So square root's really nice. And so when you do that, you get 3x squared equals 27 divided by 3. Then take the square root of both sides, so x equals plus or minus 3.